Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing a discourse, uh, my learning from a discourse. This is Middle Discourses 9 on Right View. Uh, the link to the discourse is given in the description. This discourse is where Sariputta, Sariputta is the uh, Buddha's one of the one of the top disciples of Buddha, uh, other disciples being Ananda and others. So he shares uh, what is a noble disciple, how do you define a noble disciple who has the right view? Now see, Buddha's teaching on the Noble Eightfold Path, which is the way to get freedom from suffering, one of the paths is right view, right? That uh, the, the problem is that we are in this cycle of suffering. Why? Because we think, think that uh, things are permanent and uh, uh, we think of ourselves as that we have an individu individual soul. And we do not understand that beneath everything, if you have any attachment or craving towards something, it creates suffering. It it has a suffering within the, beneath it. Right? So we do not have the view about the three marks of existence, which is impermanence, non-self and suffering. And because of that wrong view, we live our life. And we live our life that I am doing this. You know, this ego, this I, which binds us. Right? So right view is recognizing that Things are just arising and falling away, right? There is no permanent self. If there is no permanent self, then who do I get attached to, right? So that right view actually arises when we uh, have practiced the moral precepts, right? And then we uh, develop our mind. So in the Noble Eightfold Path, there is basically, th it consists of three elements. First is the, uh, uh, the ethical conduct, which is comprised by right livelihood, right speech, right action. Then comes mental development, developing our mind by right uh, effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Then comes the right view. You know, with these practices that we do, the right view also generates. So it's not a sequence wise. It's basically during the day, during our daily life also we need to practice right view. Kno knowing things that they are impermanent. They don't have a permanent self and they lead to suffering. So... Uh, so that's the right view that we need to cultivate. It's one of the key pillars of the Buddha's Noble Eightfold Path. Now, how do you define a person, a noble disciple, who has right view? So this question was uh, asked to Sariputta. And Sariputta was an Arhant. Right? He, he became an Arhant, uh, being in the Buddha's path. And he was asked to share. So he shared it like 16 ways he has explained in this, in this discourse. So this is a beautiful discourse if you are... You know, interested to learn about right view from different angles you can definitely check this course the link is given there in the description in this video i will just capture you know the you know the broad points about what uh, sariputta said so the first way sariputta explained about a uh, right view was that a noble disciple who understands the unskillful and its root and the skillful and its root right that means unskillful things and its root and the skillful things and its root so person who understands the qualities whether they are skillful unskillful and their root they are possessing right view so it was asked what is unskillful and what is the root so so sariputta said killing living creatures stealing and sexual misconduct speech that is false divisive harsh nonsensical and covetous ill will and wrong view this is called unskilled and what is the root greed hatred ill and delusion, these with greed, hatred, delusion, that is the root. So, unskillful, what is what we see on the surface, the root is all these three things, greed, hatred, delusion. A person who knows this is, un, uh, knows, is, has the right view. And what is skillful? Avoiding killing living creatures, stealing sexual misconduct, avoiding speech that is fake, revisive, harsh, nonsensical, contentment, goodwill and right view, this is called skillful. Now, what is the root of skillful? Sariputta says, contentment, love and understanding. Right? So, we, a person who understands that what flows, what are the roots and what flows from the roots and what is unskillful and what is skillful has the right view. That is the first way he explained. So, so Sariputta says, a noble disciple understands the unskillful and its root, skillful and its root. They have completely given up the underlying tendency to greed, repulsion, and to the view and conceit I am, they have given up ignorance, 
and given rise to knowledge make an end of suffering in this very life right so friends its liberation is possible in this very life if we practice right view so that is the one thing then the the mendicant said that uh, they approved what uh, sariputra said they asked another question but reverend might there be another way to describe so so that way they asked so so the second way uh, sariputra said is yes there is a noble dis disciple understands fuel right he says noble disciple who understands fuel its origin cessation and the practice that leads to cessation now what is fuel so sariputra said they maintain sentient beings that have been born there are four fuels four fuels he talked about and they maintain the sentient beings who have been born and help those that are about to be born these four fuels are keep us in the cycle of suffering this continuance solid food contact mental intention and consciousness fuel originates from craving fuel ceases when craving ceases the practice that leads to cessation of fuel is simply this noble eightfold path right view right thought right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right immersion or right concentration we say that right so the second way is this fuel right fuel which gets created from craving right so this fuel that is like solid food contact mental intention consciousness this fuel keeps and the person who knows that this fuel is driving me and the, they understand this origin and cessation of this fuel i have practiced right view right so so sariputra says noble disciple who understands fuel origin cessation practice that leads to cessation they have completely given up the underlying tendency to greed underlying tendency to repulsion and underlying tendency to the view and conceit i am they have given up ignorance same thing right second this is the second way he explained now the mendicant said good sir but reverend might there be another way to describe a noble disciple who has right view so sariputra said yes here he says the noble disciple who understands suffering origin cessation practice right so this is again uh, the noble four, four noble truths right so uh, so what he says rebirth is suffering old age is suffering death is suffering sorrow lamentation pain sadness distress are suffering association with the dislike is suffering separation from the like is suffering not getting what you wish is suffering these are the five grasping the five grasping aggregates are suffering this is suffering what is the origin of suffering it's the craving so this para buddha is talk, uh, sorry sariputta is talking about the whole noble four, four noble truths in one this para right so it's craving that leads to future lives mixed up with relishing and greed taking pleasure whatever it lands craving of sensual pleasures continued existence craving to end existence this is called the origin of suffering what is the cessation of suffering it this is the noble truth number 3 it is the fading away and the cessation of that same craving with nothing left over giving it away letting it go releasing it not clinging to it this is called the cessation of suffering what is the practice that leads to cessation of suffering it is simply this noble eightfold path right view right immersion right mindfulness all these things this is called the practice that leads so this is one more way to understand suffering is what we can do is that we can contemplate these four noble truths in our daily life okay you are sitting somewhere and just you're doing nothing maybe waiting for some some you know some some doctor or waiting in a queue you can contemplate what is suffering what causes suffering suffering can be ceased and what is the eightfold what is the way suffering can be ceased contemplation on that when we dis contemplate that when we understand that this framework what buddha has given us we are practicing right view so then mendicants asked is there another way so so the, then sariputta said noble disciple who understands old age and death their origin cessation practice that leads to the cessation i have made a separate video on old age and old age i have made separate you know old age and death you can i have this taken up compiled all the various discourses buddha has given on old age you can also check that video so Here Buddha says, "What is old age and death? What is their origin, cessation, practice? Old age, decrepitude, de 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 broken teeth, grey hair, wrinkly skin, diminished vitality, fac feeling faculties. This is called old age. And what is death? 
passing away, perishing, disintegration, demise, mortality, death, disease, breaking up of aggregates, laying to rest of the corpus, and cutting off of the life faculty of the various sentient beings. In this is called death. Such as old age, such as death. So this is what he was trying to explain. Understanding the person who understands the old age and death. Then point number five. Might there be another way to to describe a noble disciple? Buddha says. Uh, Sorry, Buddha says yes. Person who understands rebirth, origination, cessation. What is rebirth? The rebirth, inception, conception, reincarnation, manifestation of the aggregates, and acquisition of the sense fields of the various sent sentient beings. This is called rebirth. Rebirth originates from continued existence. Rebirth ceases when continued existence ceases. Then another way, sixth sixth way. He says, noble disciple understands continued existence, its origin, its cessation, practice. Right. So there are three states of continued existence: existence in the sensual realm, realm of the luminous form, and the formless realm. Continued existence originates from grasping. So seventh way. Uh, so then. When he gets asked, is there another way? So Buddha says, yes, noble disciple who understands grasping. What is grasping? So he explains, Sariputra experiences grasping at the sensual pleasures, right? Attaching themselves, attaching oneself to views, precepts, observances, and theories of the self. So grasping originates from craving. So they asked another way. So every place when he is asking, he is answering. He is saying the practice that leads to cessation of grasping is noble eightfold path. The practice leading to cessation of this is noble eightfold path. Every place, he is saying the same thing. So we need we need to understand how these things arise: grasping, craving, all these things, and know that this is the practice that we need to work on, right? So all these discourses basically connect back to the noble eightfold path. So then it's craving. What is craving? What is there are six classes of craving: craving for sight, sound, smells, taste, touch, ideas. Again, the practice for this is noble eightfold path. Then ninth way they asked: Is there another way? So, so Sariputra said ninth way is understanding the feeling, because the craving arises from the feeling. So there are six kinds of feelings: feelings born of contact, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. Right? Then. Tenth way, another way, understands contact. Again, six classes of contact. Then six sense fields. Right. Then twelfth way is name and form. Then thirteenth uh, way is consciousness. Six classes of consciousness: eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. Right. See, the consciousness also arises when the object we see outside. There is a corresponding consciousness that arises within us. There is a corresponding sense field that gets activated. Right. So all this just being aware. That how these consciousness arise and they pass away. Another way, then choices, right? The origin, uh, but what are these choices? Three kinds of choices: choices by way of body, speech, mind. This is the choices. Choices originate from ignorance. Then, fifteenth way, uh, 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 Sariputra says, noble disciple understands ignorance. What is ignorance? Not knowing about suffering, origin of suffering, cessation of suffering, and practice that leads to suffering. All this, this actually ignorance. So this is all. If you see, this is all coming back to the dependent origination. We have all been created from ignorance, and then you know we create all this consciousness, sense fields, sense bases, contact, feelings, craving. They all arise from our ignorance. Is there another way? Sixteenth and last way, uh, Sariputra says, a noble disciple understands defilement, origin, cessation, practice. When they have done this, they are defined as a noble disciple who has right view. Whose view is correct, who has experiential confidence, and the, comes to the true teaching. What is defilement? Defilement of sensuality. Three defilements: sensuality, desire to be reborn, and ignorance. Defilement originates from ignorance. Defilement ceases when ignorance ceases. Right. So these are the sixteen ways that uh, uh, Sariputta explained right view. What we need to do, right? First thing, practice daily insight meditation, which is also called vipassana meditation. Right? I have made a lot of videos on insight meditation. You can go and check how to practice insight meditation. Right? I practice in the tradition of Mahasi Sayadaw. Right? Noting each and everything that arises in my meditation. Practicing insight meditation gives us the insight on impermanence, non-self, suffering. And that wisdom frees me. Right? So practicing that. Second. In the day-to-day -day life, 
start practicing start you know have the right view right eyes right ear right uh, you see a flower which is like a, a flower which is withered off realize that this is impermanence you see your friend you meet after that friend after 10 20 years or you see your own picture after 10 20 years and you realize that you know you are getting old so realize this contemplate on this how suffering is there how you yourself creates you are have a certain attachment towards a loved one and that loved one says something which harm, hurts you how your attachment to that particular person is creating suffering for you so start more and more contemplating so when we do that we are in the process of cultivating right view and when the right view is fully established in us then we are liberated we are free we are free from this cycle of birth and death and that's my friends that's the goal that we are all going towards right so i hope this sharing that i did made some use to you helped you get some perspective do check out the complete discourse you will get your own insights i hope this video was useful do share your thoughts reflections feedback on the in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye keep practicing namo buddhaye